We are going to talk about overcoming sexual addictions, and it will be an interesting topic um, considering, you know, everyone's background. I don't know your story um, exactly, but just know that by God's grace, we all will be walking away with something. So for this afternoon, right now, today, wherever you are, we're going to be talking about the issue, the journey, and some takeaways. So in the past, normally when I've presented on this subject, I normally take like over an hour. Um, but of course, today with the time constraints, it's fine. We're going to you know, juice it down really short. And if we have time, maybe we'll have a Q&A. Um, so like I had mentioned, this topic is dense. So we will, you know, do our best. And just a quick synopsis itself. Um, some of the things that Rejoice did not mention um, was so I used to be bisexual and I used to be heavily addicted to porn and masturbation. So even though I began my relationship with God, I didn't think it was quite um, possible for God to free me from my sexual addictions. So it wasn't until I was on this mission trip and um, I remember I was presenting on the sanctuary and I was, as, as I was speaking to the saints, I remember just hearing a voice in my head, you know, just saying, you know, this is how I will restore you back to my image. So because of my background um, and just having like a genuine interest in construction and architecture, I thought it was just very humbling to know that God created a structure um, specifically for me, um, for all of us to be restored back to his image. Um, having worked in the construction industry for a couple of years, um, whenever a building is built or it's designed, it's created with the user in mind. So there's a lot of the behind the scenes that take place before a person actually sees the structure. So, you know, um, especially if someone builds a building for you, like, can you imagine that being that the person has money to actually do that? So it was humbling to know that God um, has placed um, a certain interest in all of us, a structure for us so that we are able to be restored back to his image. Um, so we'll just take another moment to pray as we begin. So Father, I'm just so excited to see how you'll move this weekend. I ask that you would invigorate all of us with your spirit, Lord. Uh, may we be attentive to your voice. Um, may you remove any distractions. Uh, may you protect us, Father, from the unseen forces. May our Wi-Fi single signals, Lord, um, be as strong as you. Uh, may you speak to me, Lord, that your name may be glorified alone. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, um, we're going to talk about sanctuary. Some of you may have seen it, but it is tweaked. It's not the same exact thing. Um, but just know that for those of you who are not too familiar with the sanctuary, um, a quick, very quick overview of it is that God had instructed Moses uh, to construct this place of worship for the Israelites as a means for them to dwell, uh, for, as a means for God to dwell with his people while they were in their wandering season. So there's a lot more to that. Of course, you could do your own research, um, get more in depth in into it. Um, for those of you who are the, you know, sanctuary gurus, um, I know I won't be covering like the atonement and all those other things, but the purpose of this workshop is to use the sanctuary as a tool, um, as our battle plan to overcoming. So we're gonna look at the outside of the courtyard. This is where we have the issue. And then we have the gate, which is the willingness aspect. We have the courtyard with the internal work. Then we have, oops, uh, the holy place. Where'd it go? Okay, oops. Okay, anyway, so we have the most holy place with the restoration. And then we have fences where we're going to talk about boundaries. So when we are looking at the issue, um, we're talking about outside of the sanctuary. So this is the outside of the courtyard. The orange is just to represent the outside before we even enter. So in Numbers 3, 38, we're told, but those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. So before even going into the sanctuary, every type of person um, was outside of the sanctuary. So we have before, meaning the surrounding areas, we have Moses and Aaron and his sons. So we're talking about the Israelites and the believers. And then we also have the strangers 
it, the non-Israelites and the non-believers. So this message is not necessarily just exclusive for the Christian only. Um, people who were outside of the sanctuary was everybody who were just doing a lot of things. Um, so some of those things that you know that you are not supposed to be doing. So we're going to be looking briefly into sexuality and then get into the practical tips to overcoming and maintaining your victory. So 1 Corinthians 6.18, I'm sure we are all familiar with flee fornication. We keep hearing flee, flee, flee. And I'm sure some of us are like, why should we flee when this feels so good? I did not grow up in the church. So when I started attending church and I started hearing, you know, the term flee fornication, I was like, okay, I don't have fornication. So there's nothing for me to flee from. Failing to realize that I was all up in the promiscuity at that time. So when we're looking at fornication, um, an outline of the biblical use of the term um, fornication coming from the Blue Letter Bible. Um, whenever they're using the term fornication, um, we're talking about incest, adultery, uh, actual fornication, the premarital sex aspect, the homosexuality, the bestiality, uh, pedophilia, um, prostitution, etc. Um, so there's various usage in the Bible, and this is to encourage you to look it up for yourself and to pay attention to the context in which fornication is used. So when we break it down even more, um, the fornication, and we look at the Greek meaning of it, it means pornaya. So it's literally telling, you know, flee pornaya. If you want to take off some letters, you'll get flee porn. Um, but even when scripture tells us to flee, we still find ourselves chained to this thing. Sin takes us further than we expected. This thing has, this, has taken us so far where we've originally started that for some of us, um, what started as something so innocent has now gone way over our heads and we're unable to outrun the consequences of our choices. So some of those things might be unwanted pregnancies, which would lead to um, an, abor uh, an abortion. Uh, we have motherless or fatherless children. Um, we have affairs and divorces that are occurring. We have entanglements. I know some of you know what that is. The brothers, the erectile dysfunction, from what I hear, it's not fun. Um, there's the changes to our brain pattern, which it's, it's affecting our frontal lobe, AKA the control center. You know, the amount of chemicals um, that are being released makes sense as to why this sexual issue is hard to break free from. We have emotional distress. I know one of the things um, some people talk about, you know, is just wear a condom and it's safe sex. Um, one of the things that I don't believe that there's anything safe outside of within marriage is that even if you wear a condom, it's not protecting you from the emotional distress that will take place. Some of you know what I'm talking about when it comes to those broken hearts. You know, sometimes you think that, okay, I'm just gonna wear a condom, it's gonna be okay. You cannot put a condom, you know, physically speaking within, on your mind and just say, okay, if I'm gonna do this physically, it's not gonna affect me mentally. Sexuality is a holistic thing. So for people who may think, you know what, I'm gonna have safe sex and have as many partners as I want, um, I would, want you to make an informed decision and really think about what is it that you're doing. Another thing is you're participating in human trafficking. You don't really know who these people are. Some of them have been kidnapped um, and they're being held hostage. Um, so clearly when you're just watching porn, it's way more deeper than just saying, okay, I'm gonna watch porn for entertainment purposes. Another thing too is having um, the secrecies and the lies that take place. And also Jesus, so even though these things occur, you know, we have this list and I'm sure there are a lot of other things I did not mention. Um, we still find ourselves chained to this thing. Um, and it makes sense why God designed it to be reserved for marriage. God does not want us to live in, you know, high stress due to our habits. He's designed us to dwell in peace all day, every day. Uh, so, but something like sexuality that is taken outside of the container of marriage it makes sense why we feel distant from God as it breaks our intimacy with him. So the addiction is a desire to be full in full communion with our creator. 
Giving up pornography is a lifestyle change. And might I add any other addiction, your lifestyle will change. So we're going to go through that. In 2 Timothy 2.22, it says, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So when we break down 2 Timothy 2.22, and we look at lust, right? So that's us with our baggage going towards lust. I'm a very visual person. So this is how I like envision my struggles of life. Um, so that is us with our backpack going towards lust, all of our baggage, whatever it is. But when we look at 2 Timothy 2.22, when it mentions fleeing lust, we then go towards um, righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So what we're seeing here is kind of like a switch where we were once going to lust, that's the outside of the sanctuary, notice the orange, the things that are outside. But as we are you know, transitioning now to the sanctuary, we're going to another space where we're saying, okay, Lord, I desire to be pure. I desire to um, change my life. We're gonna start this journey. So with all of our baggage, you know, we're taking our baggage as we're recognizing that, you know, things are going to change. Thy way, O God, is in sanctuary. Psalm 77, 13 tells us that. So this is where the willingness and the gate occurs. So we're taking our baggage with us um, as we recognize that the mind that has gotten us into this mess is not the same mind that will free us from our mess. And we begin our journey at the only entry way. So the gate of the court is the only way into the location. So a person would enter the gate of the court to offer a sacrifice for sin or thanksgiving. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. John 10, 9. So when we're looking at the gate, we're seeing our baggage. We are entering and just recognizing that we are going to begin this journey. We recognize that at the gate is our restoration, that through Jesus, you know, we will be saved. Um, you know the hymn, like, you know, just as I am, though wilt received, will welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because I promise I believe, oh, Lamb of God, I come, I come. So right now, like you're coming right now, you're not waiting till like you're spiffy clean and you've stopped the math, like you're coming right now with everything you have, um, because you're realizing how powerless you are and you're ready to commit to the journey of healing. So their internal work, the courtyard, um, taken from Exodus 27, 1, 8, there are two pieces of furniture prior to us journeying um, into the actual um, structure itself. We have the altar of burnt offerings and the labor. So God required the people to offer a sacrifice for their sins. The spotless animal is brought by the sinner and slain, and the blood is caught in a bowl. Likewise, we surrender the porn, the masturbation, the inappropriate underage relationships. You know, there are some people who are, you know, doing that. Anyway, um, so we have the situationships, the additional uh, sexual partners, erotic uh, no novels, um, as well as other pains and traumas, you know, your child's, the rape, abortions, um, the of those who have hurt you, the sexual abuse, the molestation, whatever it is. Um, and of course, if need be, you will go for counseling. But right now, what I'm just trying to emphasize is the letting go. And what we're surrendering is the unhealthy sexual behavior. I'm not anti-sex. There's a time and place for what God has designed. God created us as sexual being, beings, meaning sex is a good, beautiful act between one married woman and her one husband. Um, the, the urges we feel at times are natural. However, what we do with them, um, what the issue is, the sexual urges we have varies as it depends on our past history with sex. Um, at the altar of burnt offerings, um, where this is where we stop and we, we regain self-control and surrender those wounds that drives us to our addictions in the first place. So at the bottom right side, you see the trash can, like that's us just like letting it go, surrendering. So we're gonna ask God for a genuine heart change. 
I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Amen. Ezekiel 36, 26. Our love for God must be greater than the things we were holding on to. So this is a very personal, individual journey we all go through as we invite God to give us a new heart. So now we're at the labor. So after the sacrifice, we've let things go. Um, the priests would wash their hands and feet at the labor. This washing purified the priest and prepared him to enter the tabernacle. So if we confess our sins, meaning we, that is our part, whatever it is, I don't care, you confess your sins unto God. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He meaning God, that is his part. Remember, this is a faith journey we are on. And sometimes our issue is not that we're not doing the work, but we don't believe God and his creative words that produce. So when we look at creation, God created the world. When he spoke it, it was so. When he had spoke it, it was done. So in a sense, yeah, we believe creation. However, when God says you are forgiven, you are cleansed, you are a new creature, we sometimes don't believe that and allow time to pass before we even accept it. And we are not to just, you know, allow time to pass, but understand that we are still serving that same God of creation who is going to cleanse us and forgive us right now. Um, and we have to remember that God does not change. And since God has already forgiven us, he has forgiven you, forgive yourself. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. So what we're seeing here, before we even get to the behavior modifications, and I know sometimes people are just like, what are some quick tips you have for me to overcome? It's like, before we get to that, understand the work that was done on the cross. In Desire of Ages, it says, he has endured all that is possible for us to bear. His victory is ours. First Corinthians 15, 57 tells us, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's so beautiful. So before, like I had mentioned, before we get into any behavior modifications, understand the work that Jesus has done for us. That while we were ungodly, he died for you. Romans 5, 6 tells us that. You have to understand how much he that someone who was sinless died for someone who is as sinful as us. Whew, my God. So even when we're going through withdrawals and we might slip up, push through because of the work that was done on the cross on our behalf. Have faith, keep moving forward. So now transitioning into the external work, the holy place. We have three pieces of furniture in here. We have the several seven branch candlestick, we have the altar of incense and the 12 loaves of bread. So God required the high priest to burn sweet incense constantly. Morning and evening, prayer should ascend to God as sweet incense. So pray, learn to talk to God, set a timer if need be. So you cannot burden him with your concerns. Steps to Christ tells us that, you know, you keep your wants, your joys, your sorrows, your cares, your fears before God. So we're talking about having um, and building a genuine relationship with God. And if you wanna take it up a notch, fast. Mark 9, 29 tells us that this kind cannot come out but by prayer and fasting. Some of our addictions we are dealing with are generations old and literally it is in our DNA. Put yourself on a weekly schedule of fasting once a week um, and doing it weekly, try it out for a month. Um, 2020 is almost over, so do something for yourself. End the year better than you started. Things will ch change. I am a witness to that personally. Um, when those hunger pains kick in, um, you will be pressing into God and your level of mental sharpness will increase and giving you the ability to hear from God clearly. Continuing on. On the table of showbread, bread, the priest placed 12 loaves of bread to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. It was a continual reminder of the promises between God and the children of Israel, as well as a memorial of God's provision of food. 
I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of his bread, he shall live forever. So eat of this bread, you will live. What I'm trying to show you through the sanctuary is what my plan is like, especially during my weak moments. Because as a friend of mine had said, you know, though we, you know, we're still observing some of us, I know we're in different time zones, um, you know, we're observing the Sabbath, but the devil does not. So pay close attention. Number one, you want to eat the word daily, your personal study, you know, devotional time, that is very important. Number two, memorizing scripture, making it personal. Um, so an example of that would be uh, Psalms 32, eight. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. So one of the things I would love to do to make scripture personal for me um, is to put my name anywhere the pronoun is and just making it come alive. So that would read as such. I will instruct Kezia and teach Kezia in the way which she shall go. And I will guide Kezia with mine eye. So God's word is living. So this verse is one of my go-to. I remember those moments when I would feel super lost. Um, and in this verse, God is reassuring me that his very eye is upon him. Sorry. Um, so I'm learning to make scripture my medicine. Number three, Bible-based I am affirmations. Second Corinthians 5, 17. So an example of this is I am safe, Psalm 91. So this is where I identity comes from. His words define our values, not the amount of sexual partners you have. Our, your identity comes from the who is consistent and has created you. So as you're learning more of God, you're learning more of who you are. So when you know God, you will know yourself. Number four, find where God is calling you. John 17, four tells us, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So knowing your purpose will literally create your day-to-day -day schedule because you will know that you have things to accomplish um, regarding your purpose, but your sexual energy that you know you typically have, you're gonna use that sexual energy towards um, walking in your purpose. Number five, setting goals. So in Desire of Ages, it says, he is well pleased when they make the highest demands upon him that they may glorify his name. They may expect large things if they have faith in his promises. Amen. Uh, number six, learn God's views on sex. So you see the microphone? Like that's like me saying like, listen, porn should not be your sex education. Let me say that again. Porn should not be your sex education. That's why we have issues within marriages because some of these men feel like women gotta be like, you know, the porn stars they saw, vice versa. Some of them. Anyway, the point is, porn should not be your sex education. There are a lot of things some of us have to unlearn. Porn is not intimacy. It is a counterfeit. Do not be bamboozled by the enemy. Learn God's views on sexuality, reading books on overcoming sex, um, porn addiction, um, listening to documentaries, what else is there, um, podcasts, inform yourself. So some book suggestions, uh, Treating Pornography Addiction by Dr. Kevin Skinner. Uh, she has a secret, especially for women. Um, this is a great book. This one is per particularly on uh, women with sexual addiction. Um, New Fruit from Covenant Eyes. That's a wonderful, easy read as well. Documentary suggestions. Heart of Man, that's on Netflix or Apple. Uh, Conquer series, that one I know is um, it's a bit pricey, but the content is great. And another one is Journey Interrupted. You could find that on YouTube or on our ministry page, uh, ministries.org. Um, the bottom two, they are free on their websites. I know some of us don't want to spend money on sexual readings, whatever, but you need to read. You need to educate yourself on what's what sex really has been doing to you um, and learning from it. So that's really key. Number seven, know your family tendencies. So David, uh, we know he had many wives and concubines. We are well aware of uh, Sister Bathsheba. Um, and then we have Solomon. We know Solomon was well out there having, you know, 700 wives, having princesses. 
having the 300 concubines, like this man was out there, right? Um, and then we have uh, Rehoboam, which was the son of Solomon, had 18 wives and 60 concubines. Uh, so just seeing how that is, you, David, his son was Solomon, Solomon, his son was Rehoboam. We're seeing that it's in the family, it's in the bloodline. So knowing your family tendencies is a part of knowing thyself. Whatever may be our inherited or cultivated tendencies to wrong, we can overcome through the power that he is ready to impart. Amen. Number eight, understand your body. So your cycles, your feeling, your arousals, your triggers, traumas, emotions, sleeping pattern, it is important for you to know. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.11 tells us, lest Satan should get an advantage for us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So one of the acronyms, BALTS, um, it is bored, angry, hungry, lonely, tired, stressed, or sad. If you take this recovery seriously, I'm telling you, your level of self-awareness and emotional intelligence will improve. For my lady friends, it is very important for us to know the time of our month. Um, having a kind of like an ETA of when it's going to arrive um, is helpful because when we have those sharp uh, drop in hormones, it could lead to the mood issues and then feelings which lead us to being triggered. Um, if you're acting out to medicate the painful cramps, drink some raspberry tea, try to consume a more plant-based diet. And in general, for everyone, um, those moments when you feel like masturbating, ask yourself, what is the real need? Uh, regarding sleeping patterns, uh, sometimes sleeping on your stomach and putting your hands on your pillow will help you from giving in. Like you have to change your nighttime routine. If you notice like you tend to fall a lot at night, change your nighttime routine. Um, so you just, all of this, like understanding your body, you're learning to become more aware of who you are. Number nine, uh, learn how to manage stress. Um, and also forgive those who hurt you. So in 1 Peter 5, 7, we're told, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. So one of my greatest lessons during recovery was that God intentionally did not design my body, your bodies, uh, to carry burdens, stressors, unforgiveness. When we continue to allow these things to stress us out, it weakens our immune system which leads to then various diseases. Um, my biggest struggle was not even my sexuality, but it was letting go of my resentment, my anger, my unforgiveness, um, the unmet expectations I had towards my parents, which caused me to act out. So whatever is stressing you out, whatever has your heart heavy, God truly wants to handle all of your burdens. So just let it go. Number 10, become mindful of what you eat. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 tells us, therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. So of course, if you're eating a lot of junk food, a lot of sweets, um, of course, you're going to feel sad, you're gonna feel depressed. And then you're finding yourself wanting to be held by the wrong person. You are what you eat. Uh, so a whole, um, a whole food plant-based diet has shown to improve our mood. Learn to gain self-control over your appetite. When you think about um, Adam and Eve, there was a loss of self-control over appetite. And then boom, you know, here we are. Uh, number 11, become mindful of the music you listen to. First Samuel 16, 23 tells us, when the evil spirit was upon Saul, David took a harp and played. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Music, as we all know, is powerful. It can either help you or cause you to stumble. So in the beginning of my recovery, I would go to sleep with soft classical hymns for me to fall asleep. Um, I was on Instagram a couple of days ago and one of the reels, like the short videos had started to play automatically. And the song that immediately played brought me back to high school and it made sense as to why I was so promiscuous at that time because 
The song literally says, promiscuous girl, wherever you are, I'm all alone and it's you that I want. And so I remember just thinking like that explains a lot of my behavior because a lot of the music I used to listen to was sexually based. And number 12, become mindful of what you are looking at. Job 31, one tells us, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. So just because someone who, you know, you see someone who's gorgeous, that does not mean sex. Um, that just means you praise God for his creation and you move on. Just because you see a female in a sundress, it does not mean you have to turn your head. Um, some of you know that you need to unfollow some people on social media or just take a social media break. Um, maybe there are movies or shows you're watching that entices you. Um, so all of this, these things that I'm mentioning to you, it's helping you to become mindful of everything you consume. Number seven, the seven, the seven branch candlesticks. So, so this was used to provide light into the dark room. Matthew 5, 14 tells us, ye are the light of the world. So number one, you're gonna share your testimony, of course, in due time. Um, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Revelations 12, 11. Number two, you're gonna let people see you. Stop isolating yourself. Um, this is where we're gonna learn to have you know, accountability. So for some of us, as you know, uh, we like to keep to ourselves, um, especially as porn lovers, uh, we love to isolate. Um, but it's important for us to get out there. I know, you know, Corona's in town, um, but you can meet people, Instagram, not Instagram, what do you call this? Uh, FaceTime, Zoom, you know, how we are like right now. Um, but you need to have an accountability crew. You need to have community. Um, God will help you to, and make it clear to you who to open up to over time. Because over time for myself, I've realized that my accountability crew has expanded over the sense. Um, so healing happens in a safe, com safe, trusted community, um, especially during those moments of withdrawals. Um, a Christian counselor, therapist, um, if need be, helps tremendously as well. But do not let your shame stop you from growing. Accountability is everything with this particular struggle. Um, learn to have healthy platonic non-physical relationships with others, um, especially of the opposite sex. There's nothing wrong with having, you know, genuine friendships, um, but just make sure there's no hidden agendas. That's where things get sticky when we have hidden agendas and we've been, you know, castle building in a sense. Um, but just learn to keep sex out of the equation. Number three, be in the moment. Second Corinthians 10, five tells us, casting down imaginations, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So this verse is teaching us to be present in the moment, to stop, you know, replaying old sex capades or fantasizing. Um, sometimes we literally have a war going on in our minds. Philippians 2, 5 tells us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Number four, journaling. I've come to appreciate journaling. Uh, it's kind of like a tangible way for, for me to see what's going on in my head and to understand you know, what I'm feeling, um, which then helps me from relapsing. Hence why I, under I mentioned earlier to understand what you're feeling so that it helps you to break the cycle of continually going to the porn um, or your sexual partners. Number five, moving or you know, move, you know, move your body. So you're gonna you know, go jogging, go for a walk. Um, work on getting a six pack. I don't know, like <laughs> whatever, you know, just, just move, you know, um, to the married folks, you know, rebuild your sex, you know, your sex life. Um, we want the dopamine that honors God, not the dopamine that is produced from watching porn or having multiple sexual partners. Um, learn to release your frustration in a different healthy way. Um, remember that God has designed our minds with plasticity. Um, it can change for the better as we build healthier habits, but become active in sweat producing workout. Number six, uh, you know, work hobbies. Uh, Colossians 3.23 tells us, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. So learning a new skill, be faithful in the work God has called you to. If you don't like where your current role or job is, do something about it, but don't feel stuck. 
or trap, you know, gain a hobby, learn an instrument, spend time in nature. Um, when you're in nature, you'll really learn how things grow, that things take time to grow. Likewise, you take time to grow. And number seven, volunteering, you know, help someone get out of your head and serve in some sort of way. So now as we are entering into the most holy place, um, this is where we're gonna talk about the restoration um, within the Ark of the Covenant. So the jar of manna reminded the people that God constantly provides for them. So in Exodus 15, 16, 15, we're told, it is manna, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Joshua 1, 8 tells us, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So this verse is helping you to figure out what to do with your new open time, um, those time slots that you used to use, you know, for watching porn, sexual partners, whatever it is, for something wholesome. We are looking for success. Your answer is right here. You have an opportunity to bring your mind, your finite mind, in direct contact with the infinite mind. Your time before the maker should be a time of refreshing. Um, Aaron's rod that budded served as a reminder to the people of God's power of bringing life from death. So John eleven twenty five 25 tells us, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So that same resurrecting power is available to you right now. Amen. Uh, so the table of commandments. So the commandments were given by God as a reminder to the people that he would protect them if they were obedient to him. Proverbs 7, 2 tells us, keep my commandments and live. So I'm trying to emphasize to you how much God desires for you to live as you surrender your darling sins. Remember, he came to give us life more abundantly. Continuing on, so when we look at the boundaries, uh, the court fences, right? Uh, the court fences were made of long pieces of linen surrounding the tabernacle, which protected outsiders and animals from coming in. So what I'm trying to emphasize that even though we spoke about all these things that you could do, you could surrender your heart, you could you know, start journaling and have accountability and all of that stuff, you have to protect your growth. That is very important. Notice how the fences uh, goes around the perimeter of the tabernacle. Having a software filter makes all the difference as a means from protecting you from going back to the porn. I use Covenant Eyes, um, if you're interested, in um, some sort of a filter. There are prices to these. And the sad part is, I remember when I was like first started this journey, I was just like, I gotta pay for this? Like, ugh, that's embarrassing. Um, but anyway, so if you need a promo code, um, you could use COM SAFE. That will give you a free month um, if you purchase a annual, um, what is it, like an annual package or something? But either way, um, I've been using it for years now and it's super helpful. Um, another thing is also accountable to you. Um, so what we're seeing here when we talk about these boundaries, you know, protecting your growth, your boundary will be tailored to you. So some boundary ideas, you know, if you're in a relationship, there's really no reason why you're having like private sleepovers. I don't know, but I mean, I get it if it's like a family trip, you know, other people are there sleeping in separate rooms, but I don't, other than that, I don't, I don't you know, private sleepovers, I don't know. Anyway, so um, having curfews on certain people, it helps tremendously. Um, if you're co-parenting, um, it's not an excuse to go back to your ex. Be a responsible adult with self-control. Uh, guide the type of things you share. Don't be so quick to get emotionally attached with someone, especially when they have expressed zero interest in you. Like, don't play yourself if you know the person has it. Anyway, all right. Um, another one is uh, some of you who are into like the dating apps, use it you know, and you're using actually to have sex, you know, it would be helpful to un uninstall those dating apps. Um, another thing is, you know, if you are walking down the street and you see something, you know, you can look at the sky, you can look at the tree, you don't have to look at every curve, you know, you don't have to follow through with that thought. Having self-control is everything. If you do not have self-control now, you know, what do you think happens in marriage? it makes sense why we have affairs going on within marriages because there's like kind of like a lack of 
self-control. Like affairs just don't happen overnight. Like there were thoughts that have occurred and people just intentionally ignored these things before they fell. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is respect your growth. Now, um, two more things we're gonna look at. Um, when it comes to relapsing. So it's very important to kind of have tools to help you identify your patterns in your behavior. So using the term faster, F, you're forgetting priorities, A, you have anxiety, and then you start speeding up, you get ticked off, you get exhausted, and then you relapse. So you set a plan in your mind, you're like, okay, I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna, I don't know, you set a priority for today but you ended up not doing it. So of course, naturally you become anxious. So with you becoming anxious, now you start to speed up because you forgot to do the priority. So of course you start getting ticked off because you were anxious, you're speeding up, and then you become exhausted because you're just like, okay, I'm ticked off and because I was speeding up because I forgot all these things. And then what happens, you end up relapsing. So this journey to freedom is one of self-discovery. Do not be discouraged when you fall but take inventory when you relapse. Understand what has triggered you and make the appropriate changes. So we looked at the issue. The Bible is a whole marriage book, essentially. It makes sense why God hates fornication and adultery. Why? Because it breaks our intimacy with him. The journey. Overcoming is a process, not an event pace yourself. Sanctification is not the work of a moment, an hour, a day, but of a lifetime. Some takeaways. Be honest with yourself and God, this is not a competition. Keep that in mind. This is a journey you are on. Do not compete with the next brethren and trying to figure out why is that they don't stumble or fall. That's not your business. Worry about yourself and be real with God. Um, be gentle with yourself. Proverbs 24, 16 tells us, you know, a just man falls seven time and rises up again. If this is something you've been struggling with since you were a child, be gentle with yourself. And now you're like in your 30s, 40s, 20s, whatever. If you were been struggling with this since you were a child, do not like, don't put false expectations and think, okay, I have to get over this right now. And then you're going to be ticked off when you don't. So be kind, be gentle with yourself. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, pace yourself. You're going to be on this journey for a lifetime. Um, and lastly, celebrate the victories, even if, if it's small. Um, me growing up as an only child, I think I just like to like celebrate myself. I don't know. It's just, it's whatever, but reward yourself. Like if you know, like you have a habit of going like, you know, every single day and you don't do it for like five days, you better praise God. You didn't fall for those five days and reward yourself with, I don't know, like, I, I don't know, like um, a new phone. Okay. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but you know, like celebrate the victory, celebrate what God is doing, praise God for what's happening. Um, so my appeal in closing is very simple because I know I touched on a lot of things and all of you who are listening vary in your levels um, where you are in your journey. But all I ask is that would you implement one thing that I discussed today, just one thing and move by faith to incorporate other things. But all I ask is just for one thing this weekend. Um, I know that change is very intimidating to some of us, hence why we stay in our addictions, because we're scared of the unknown and letting go of what is familiar. But my friend, growth is not going to happen in your comfort zone. Some of you know that you have to cut off a particular person or several people. Some of you know that you need to put software filters on your devices. Some of you know that you need to stop allowing your emotions to dictate your behavior and driving you to to porn. Nobody can do the work of healing for you. If you need someone to touch base with, my email is on the bottom. Um, you can email me if you need a God talk to. I could email it to one of my male colleagues. Or if you already have someone, that's great. Praise God. Reach out to them. Um, but you do not have an excuse to stay stuck in your ways when God is providing a way of escape for you. He has already given you freedom. Walk in it fully. I shared with you earlier, you know, the work that was done in the courtyard. Remember, he has already given you the victory because of the work that was done on the cross. So walk in it fully. So the theme of this weekend is refresh, meaning to give you new strength or energy to whatever. So I pray that with this workshop I shared with you all today, it is giving you new strength to push another day. 
So let's just take a moment to pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I just praise you for what you are doing as we are in various locations throughout the world. I praise you that you are a God that is even right by our side at this time. Lord, I praise you that you are closer than our skin. You're closer than any sexual partner or porn could ever be to us. I thank you, Lord, that you are a God that desires to be intimate with us, that as we draw close to you, Father, you will draw close to us. I pray that you would forgive us in those moments where we have broken the covenant with you. Um, but I praise you, Father, that your spirit, for your word, that it says, like, you know, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I thank you that we could call you friend, um, that we don't have anything to prove to you, Father, that you've already approved us. So I pray for anyone who is quietly struggling right now, that they would be reminded that victory is, at, is already theirs, Father. May they walk in it and understand that you are a God that is patient and that you are a God that condemns them no more. In Jesus' name, amen.